Hello, everyone, and welcome to Classroom 2.0 Live for Saturday, the 3rd of May. The topic for today is EduCanon, and your show hosts are Peggy George, Lori Moffat, that's me, and Tammy Moore. Thanks so much to Tammy for doing the closed captioning for the show. Our special guest is Shwarup Raju, the co-founder of EduCanon. Here's the link that Peggy will put into the chat for the live binder for today about EduCanon. The link on this slide won't work for you. Notice that for Classroom 2.0 live binders, the tabs are on the left side rather than across the top. All show recordings are posted at the Archives and Resources page on the Classroom 2.0 Live website, live.classroom20.com slash archive dash and dash resources dot html. And you can get the recording for today's show as well as past shows there. Here is where, where we get interactive. Uh, Please use that pointer tool and let us know where in the world you're logging in from. I'm logging in from central Pennsylvania. I know Peggy logs in from Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, Tammy logs in from southwest Arkansas. I'm not sure where Schwarup is logging in from. We've got Italy. We have Argentina, Portugal today. Germany today, worldwide group. So here's the first Schwa Roops logging in from Los Angeles. The first polling question is this. Do you use digital videos in your classroom? Again, use that check for yes, the X under polling for no. The check and the X on the slide itself won't add to the polling. I'll now post this to the whiteboard. And from those that voted, 99 or 50, I'm sorry, 59 percent, a little tiny type, 59 percent, over half of the people in the room do use digital videos in the classroom. The second question is this, have you used videos or screen casts to flip learning in your classroom? Again, the green check for yes, the red X for no. And again, I will post the results to the whiteboard. And we've got 53% of those that voted saying yes, they have done this. The last polling question, when you use videos with your students, do you use accountability measures? And again, I will post this to the whiteboard so we can see the results. 37% of those that voted said yes, they do do that. Right, there should have been an other there. Again, welcome everybody to this Saturday's 
show for Classroom 2.0 Live. The topic today is EduCanon with uh, Peggy George, Lori Moffat, and Tammy Moore. And I'm going to turn the microphone over to Patty Ruffing now, who will introduce our guest. Hi, everybody. I am very excited to have Swarup here with us. Um, Swarup has his degree from Pomona College, and he's the co-founder of EduCanon, and his focus is on user acquisition, product growth, marketing, and design. And he says that his friend and co-founder, Ben Levy, pulled him away from his boring job managing outreach data systems at Kaiser Permanente in order to launch EduCanon. I was really fortunate to make contact with Shorup when I signed up for EduCanon. I'm a great one for signing up with any tool that sounds cool. And I'm not even sure where I heard about it, but I thought this would be a great tool that I could try out. And I was really pleased at the way EduCanon, and in this case it was Shorup, actually reached out personally to me uh, as a new user and asked if there were any questions or anything they could do to help make this EduCanon experience a smooth one. And knowing that there's a real person, in this case a team at the other end who will address your personal concerns, is really a bonus for us using these tech tools. And I was thrilled that he accepted our invitation to come on today and share his tool with educators all over the world. So I guess we should ask him the Dimby question for today. And that is, what are some of the challenges with using video in and outside your classroom? So, Swarup, it's all yours. Oh, I was talking and nobody heard me, probably. <laughs> Hopefully you guys can all hear me now. Uh, oh, awesome. Well, thanks for that introduction, Patty. Uh, <laughs> well, this is a really great question because it provides a solid transition into why we decided to start EduCanon and what our platform actually does. Uh, we at EduCanon, as you guys can probably imagine, we're pretty huge into this potential that video has to engage students. And I'm guessing a lot of you feel the same way. From the poll that looked like, most of the respondents uh, said yes if they're using digital video in the classroom. And as most of you probably know, while video has its potential and is great and everything, it has its own challenges. Unlike in a classroom where you're you're face to face with your students as a learning material, while students are watching video, there's a bit of a disconnect between you and their learning experience. So you don't necessarily know what concepts are challenging them or even at a more basic level, whether or not they watch the video. And that's kind of our goal with EduCanon, to increase that connection between you, the teacher, and your students' learning experience. So you have the answer to these questions. You really understand where those misconceptions are, and you can help them out the next day or later in class. So how do we do that? EduCanon is a web application that lets you take any, any video content that you find online. At, uh, that could be a YouTube video, a Vimeo video, or teacher tube and make it engaging. Uh, we let you embed activities or questions that students engage with as the video progresses. And while these students are responding to your questions, you're fed analytics to the, on the back end. Here you see this little screenshot on the bottom right. This is what our, you know, our monitoring page looks like. It gives you a pretty already digested visualization of where your students um, were, uh, were confused and some basic information on whether or not they watched the video. Um, again, EduCanon, it's a free web application. It works on all updated browsers, and it's even responsive to iPad devices. What I mean by that is that students can watch an EduCanon lesson that you've created on their iPad. They don't need to download anything to their, uh, to their device. They just log in to EduCanon.com and view the, the lesson as it is. Um, on to the next slide. Lag, I think. Great. And so Patty already gave a pretty solid introduction of who I am. Uh, 
Our platform it was started by my co-founder Ben Levy while he was teaching middle school science up in California. And shortly after he developed the Minimum Viable product, I came on board to help design the product and find some users for it. And we went to Learn Launch X, uh, which is an ed tech accelerator out in Boston. Graduating it from it last September. After we graduated from it, we launched the version of Educanon that you guys are playing around today. Um, it's a very young product. Uh, we've been out since September. Um, we're always looking for feedback from teachers. So if you ever have any feedback or questions, Sue doesn't know, and we always love hearing from teachers. Oh, and also there's, there's four of us now, although we started as two. We have uh, another developer on board now, now and also another staff on customer support. It looks like there's a little bit of lag whenever I'm hitting the next slide. So if you guys can, if, or Peggy can send me a note whenever the next slide is appearing because I don't want to talk before it's actually on the slide, on the uh, screen. Great. <coughs> I thought a good way to start this presentation would be to talk about how one of our users, Mr. Allen, uh, just use Educan in his classroom and then show you the examples he created with his students. <coughs> so Mr. Allen, he teaches middle school science all the way out in UAE. I asked him why he decided to go with Educan this year. And what he's done in the past is he's had his students watch a video at the beginning of class and he'd have some sort of worksheet to go along with it for accountability measures. But he found that while he felt his students were engaged with the video, he, he had to he had to almost watch over the shoulder to make sure that they were actually paying attention to the video. And even though that they might have been engaged, he wasn't really sure what they were taking out of the video. And even though he had a worksheet to go along with it, he didn't get that immediate feedback that he needed to inform the rest of the lesson. <coughs> and now uh, a couple of notes. Uh, I'm about to show you an Educanon public lesson that he created. Uh, Peggy has already dropped it into the chat. A few notes. So I wanted to show with the first question that Educanon, it's not just an environment for you to add questions. It's an environment that you can add in any dynamic, rich content. You'll see in the first question we're adding in an embedded Wikipedia page that links directly to the live Wikipedia site on the Big Bang for the teachers to, for the student to review at before they go on with the material. And, and again, you can embed almost any rich content to these questions. You could embed an image, you can embed an audio, you can embed um, a Google Maps even if you want your students to play around with some sort of visualization. Uh, I, I haven't shown the lesson, I'm just making a few notes first. And the second point is that uh, after you go on to the second question, you'll notice it's a multiple choice. And for each question, answer choice, uh, for, e for each answer choice, you're given an explanation. Uh, and that's, that was created by Mr. Allen, just in case you got the answer wrong and you need some information to get back on the correct learning track. So uh, now I'm going to go ahead and let you guys play this Educanon public link. So if you go ahead and click on that, um, the link in the chat, and if you guys can let me know once you get to say question three, you can let me know by hitting the check button on the left hand side just as you enter the poll. But I'll, I'm going to go ahead and mute myself while you guys play.
Awesome. <laughs> Glad to hear that you guys are enjoying the video so far. <laughs> um, I'm going to go ahead and go on to the next slide now. So there, there are a couple of things that are a little bit different between what you just saw and how a student would experience an Educanum lesson. So we implemented something we call controlled pacing to go along with the student delivery system. And we did this because we wanted to feel like this, the Educanum lesson for the student was similar to how it felt in class time. And just like in class, students can't fast forward past the pace of your instruction. They can't fast forward in an Educanum lesson past the furthest point they have reached in the video. So they get all the benefits of online video in that they can always pause and rewind, review material that they missed the first time, but they can't skip past the pace of your instruction. They can't skip past this blue bar here, which is capturing the max time that they have reached in the video. All right, so now that you guys have a sense for how an Educanum lesson looks or how one of our teachers has created an Educanum lesson, I'm going to walk you through how one is created. Let me go ahead and share my screen. Pull up the builder. So uh, can you guys see, or see my screen? I just want to double check to make sure. Before I move on. Awesome. So what I did here is I went and I, I logged into my EduCanada cloud uh, account and I hit the first uh, tab here, the build. And this is where you're going to go ahead and add in questions or build your own EduCanada lesson. So the first step is I'm just going to, so first off, I'm going to actually build an EduCanada lesson off of this TED-Ed video that I found on YouTube. Again, these EduCanada lessons can be built from virtually any online video content you find. Um, that could be a LearnZillion lesson, which there's thousands on YouTube, Khan Academy, uh, uh, the TED-Ed just like this, the, there, there's, there's millions to choose from. Here I'm going to copy and paste this TED-Ed lesson into the EduCanada Builder environment. And now it's already pulled in. To go along with the video, I'm just going to enter a title of the video. What is a hero's journey? Yeah, to answer your question, what a lot of our teachers are doing is they're creating screencasts themselves with a program like Screencast-O-Matic. And at the end of that screencast, you're given an option to upload it straight to YouTube. And with that, you can just copy and paste that YouTube URL into this builder. And I'm going to add some tagging to it. And if you'd like, you can search Common Core Standards and tag some standards to it for later analysis. And what you see down here is that with each YouTube URL you paste into Educanon, we provide you some data on what other teachers are doing with that same YouTube video. So we have something like 20,000 Educanon lessons in our database. So that means there's a lot of data for us to um, feed you guys and help you create your own lesson. And if you're, if you're stuck at any point, you can just click on this guy and see what seven questions this teacher made. Um, yes, Rebecca, the videos can be made from Vimeo as well. If you like to crop the video, say you don't want to show the first 20 seconds of this, of this video to your students, just move this left-hand slider over and that designates a new start point. To, to change the end time, it's as easy as changing the start time. Just drag this over. And now I have a new start time and end time for the video. To build a question, all you have to do is hit the build question at the moment of time that corresponds to the scrub bar. So now I want to build a question at second 32. I'm just going to hit this button. And I'm pulling open the question editor. Uh, and what you'll notice is that this question editor, it looks just like a Microsoft Word document. And it's just as powerful as one. You can insert images. You can insert special characters. You can uh, uh, change the formatting in, in whatever way you'd like. You can insert equations if you're a math teacher. We even let you insert an audio. So click on this guy, record your own voice, and embed it into this question editor, and, it'll, and your students will be able to listen to your own voice along with the question. 
now I'm going to type out uh, a sample question. So, what is a hero's journey called? Uh, I'm not very good at this, so I'm going to make awful answers. But I know that the correct answer is monomyth. So, this button here corresponds to the correct answer choice. And for each answer choice, again, you can enter an explanation that the student reads when they select that answer choice. And so I'm just going to say, are you sure about that? We remember. So I go ahead and put that for the rest of them as well. Of course, you can change around the explanation for whatever, for, uh, for each answer choice. You can the question. And now you have your first multiple choice question embedded into the video. And you can continue doing the same process building out more questions. Here is the second question. Um, incorrect answer. Correct answer. And what you'll notice that it's, it's going to continue building out this worksheet, just like, you, just like a traditional worksheet. And one thing I want, to take, we, we want you to take away about this whole builder experience is that it's incredibly easy to do. We did a lot of work while designing this just to feel like it fits the normal workflow. And most teachers say that they build the first educational lesson within 10 to 15 minutes. Um, uh, sorry, I, I've seen a lot of questions come up. Let me just, um, yes, yeah, so you can go back and edit it after you published it. So now I'm going to, after, after you're done with the lesson, you just hit finish build, and you're going to be taken to your lessons tab. And this is just your database of all the lessons you've created. If you want to go back and change anything here, this is the same lesson I just created. I'm just going to hit the edit button. It's going to take me back into the lesson builder, and I can change it just as easy as hitting, hitting the question and change it anywhere I like. Oh, that's good to know. Thanks, Maggie. <coughs> So going back to the lessons page, we offer a few options for you to integrate it with other systems. Well, you'll, no you'll notice here this share, this orange share and embed icon. Click on this guy, and you're given options to either share with students or share publicly. That lesson I delivered to you, that lesson de de developed by Mr. Allen, that was a public lesson link. You'll notice that you didn't have to log in or anything to view it. But at the same time, because it was a public link that required no login, we're not capturing any data on the back end. It's it's a useful tool for engagement in that the video will pause. You can have that uh, embedded Wikipedia article. Um, but at the same time, we don't capture data. One thing that's really cool about it, though, is that if you send this public link to one of your colleagues and they log in while they're viewing it, they can add that same Educam lesson link to, your, to their account. So if you log into your Educam account and you access that Christopher Allen Educanon public link, you can add it to your own account with the same questions and edit it in whatever way you'd like. The other option is to share with students. And this requires a login, but at the same time, it will capture the, the data on their performance. And again, th this, you can take this embed code, you can put it in your own blog, you can put it in the Enmoda page, you can put it into whatever LMS system you're currently using it. We try to make it as easy as possible for you to integrate Educanon into your current systems. And now, what does this look like after your students respond to your questions? Let me go up to the top and hit monitor. And this is where you access your student lesson grades. English, the grammar throwdown. And you'll notice this is a very easy visualization of your student scores. Just what questions, what, what answer choices they make, what's the score that they had. You can sort each question to get a breakdown of what are the most frequent answer choices. Um, one thing that's really cool is that you can select each answer choice, and it gives, up, it gives you this pop-up that lets you see what the students saw, your question, and the answer choice that they made. And another feature, on um, the second time around, uh, so one of our biggest debates as we're developing the platform was, how do you deal with student retakes? Because it's really easy for a student to just memorize the correct answer and just select that the second time around. And we didn't want it, we wanted a process that 
demonstrated a higher order of thought process, that sort of higher order of thinking. So the second or time around, the student can enter an explanation to show why they decided to go with that answer choice. So here you're saying the explanation that the student wrote, just a free text. And now me as a teacher, I can assign a half point or full point depending on whether I think it was a good explanation showing their thought process. So here I think it's a good one, so I'm going to assign them a full point. And now you'll see that the answer choice is correct. Now, how do you assign a lesson to your students? It's a pretty simple process, just like the rest of our platform. Um, you go assign. Uh, you can add up to eight classes. Um, so you just click on this guy. You, you create your class title, class description. Um, let's just say uh, English literature. Three. And after that class is created, all you do is drag and drop into the class. And I'm sure a lot of you guys are wondering right now, how do I actually get my students on board this? There are a couple of options that we provide for you. Uh, let, let me just uh, show you the home page to give you a visualization. So we're going to sign up. So we offer two options. Either A, the student can sign up themselves so they can log in with their Enmodo account. So same login credentials they're using for Enmodo, log in with their Google Plus account, or they can log in through our system and then basically just add that class that you saw me create. And then after they add it, they're forever linked to that class, never have to do any of those processes. Whenever they log in, they'll see whatever assignment that you, whatever lesson you've assigned them. The other option is that if you don't want your students to go through any sign up, you just, you just want to do the burden of the work, you can send us a student roster. So after you log in, you're taken to this tutorial page. Um, yeah, and, and if you ever forget to have to get to the tutorial page, it's just this dog here that you see in the F bar. And you see this little note here, if you don't want your students to sign up by registering individually, just email us the student roster form, email students at educana.com and we'll upload the student roster ourselves. Again, this is all free and we'll do it within the same day. That's usually our, that's our turnaround. <coughs> uh, one more thing I want to show you before I jump back into a few more use cases. <coughs> so I'm going to go to the settings page. One thing that we learned while we piloted our platform is that one of the biggest challenges wasn't user interface or anything or the, or any, anything of that sort, it was actually students forgetting their password. So we have a system that lets you, in case your students forget their password, you can just go to your settings page and you see the secondary password for each student. So you just, you can send this over to them and they can re-log in and change their password just like that. And with the system you can also, say a student misadds your class, you can change it by just clicking on it and unchecking. <coughs> Sorry about that. And that's the basic workflow of Educan. And um, I guess, again, there's two points I want to take you guys to take away from this. One is that the whole process is pretty simple. Most people get through it in just a few minutes. And second is that it's pretty powerful. And with that build environment, you notice that you can embed virtually any content that you find online. And we try to make it as simple as possible just to feel like a Word document. I'm going to sign out and stop this sharing now. Uh, sorry about that, there's a little bit of lag on my side. Oh, there you go. So I wanted to share a couple teacher stories with you. And you can access these stories. Um, they're all on, I, I believe, the live binder that Peggy shared with you guys, but they're also on our blog. If you go to blog.educana.com, you'll find these links. And we wrote down a couple of detailed stories about how teachers are using our platform. And the first of which is the flipped use case. So Carolyn Daniel, she's like, I would say 40% of our teachers. She assigns an Educana lesson as a homework assignment. 
And in her case, what she did is she assigned um, a video, an educational lesson on the scientific method for students to watch. And, she, and because it was an educational lesson, she had all of that data on their misunderstandings and where they need to help. So in class time, she had a lot more time to work with them on fun projects. And what you'll see in the blog is they actually worked together and they made a scientific method rap video, kind of building off those misconceptions that, they saw, that she saw from her educational data. The second example is Mr. Jackson. So he uses Educanon in a blended environment, kind of similar to Mr. Allen. And he, he's a social studies teacher somewhere out in rural Maine. I, I don't remember what school. And he uses crash course history videos. I'm not sure how familiar you guys are with, his, with John Green's content, but he's a really good presenter. But at times, he moves a little quickly for students to grasp everything. So he used Educanon as a way to break up all of the content into digestible components. And I'm sure you guys can think of other video content where you're a little worried that the student's going a little faster than they can actually absorb the material. And that's what a lot of our teachers are using that embedded engagement for. And the second pain point was that he found that even though he would sometimes deliver videos and have some worksheet to go along with that video, he found that his students were just skipping around with the video, just looking for the answers to the question. They weren't going along with the pace of instruction. And that's what he decided, and that's how Educan had really helped him out. That controlled pacing ensured that the students was going along with the pace of instruction of his video lecture, just like he would like them to do in his class. And that's actually the end of my presentation. Um, if, if I, I think this is probably a good time to queue up the Q&A. Awesome. Oh, also, before I forget, uh, if you go to blog.educan.com, there's a ton of sample lessons that you guys can check out. Yes, I retrieved lots of questions, and I'll apologize in advance if I ask ones that have been an answered in chat. Um, is there an educator discount for the premium version, and how stable do you expect the premium pricing to be? Oh, uh, so there is a discount in that for the people that sign up early, we do, so the standard pricing is $80 a year. And for the early adopters, we would bring it down to 48 And I can make sure that you guys are all in that group if you're interested. And I'm going to leave you guys with my contact info. So just send me an email, and I'll make sure that you guys are in that early adopter discount group. Um, does that answer the question? I hope it does. I think, I think it answered that one. A related one is what's the difference between the free and the premium versions? Sure. So everything I showed you just now is all free. Uh, the only difference with the premium is that we embedded some a lot of time-saving features. And that you know that uh, that 20,000 lesson database that I talked to you about. With the premium, you get access to all 20,000. So you can find a lesson covering virtually any subject, add it to your own account, edit the questions, and deliver it just as you like. Uh, we also offer a gradebook export, so you can um, download all your student grades as an Excel spreadsheet for easy integration with the current system. And the third feature is uh, free response question types. Um, again, with the free version, you can always do that student retake explanation, but the premium version of uh, free response becomes standard. Okay, that, that was related to how do you get grades out of EduCanon. Um, is, is yeah, the I'll, grade I'll download add, though. only available yeah. in the premium version? Yeah, the, the grade download is available in the premium. Um, something that we're working on this summer is it's, it's more of an integration with Edmodo. So right now you, uh, you can use your Edmodo login credentials, but the grades don't transfer seamlessly. So we're working on an LTI that will make it an easier process. But that's not in play yet, so okay. just keep that in mind. Are there, are there plans for an app? Yes. We're working on it this summer. So we're going to have an iOS in play uh, for at least student delivery um, before the fall. I think, I think you answered this question. Can you use your own video in a lesson? Yeah. So I, I think that will, a lot of teachers are doing is they're creating their own screencasts using programs like Screencast-O-Matic or Explain Everything, which is an awesome app for uh, creation using an iPad. At the end of these apps, there's an option to upload straight to YouTube. 
-hmm. And you can just take that URL and paste it into that builder. It's a pretty simple process. Okay. Uh, let me go back to my. Um, so, if you do upload a video, that video then has to be public. Is that right? Oh, so, so the question is, if you're worried that other teachers find that EDUCAN lesson, you have a choice. And if you if you remember to be going to the settings page, uh, there's an option that you can check everything that's private. If you don't mm -hmm. want anybody, if you don't want your lessons to be part of EDUCAN lesson database, you just click that guy, and it won't be accessible by anybody but you and your students that have your private teacher code. Okay, but if you have a, let's say you've already uploaded a YouTube video and uh -huh. you've got at least some part of the link, does that link have to be a public link for it to work? Oh, sorry, I misunderstood the question. Like, so so it could be either a public link or an uh -huh. unlisted link. Okay. So unlisted link, just for you guys that don't know, it's um, it, other people on YouTube can't find it, but it also requires no login to view. Uh, you can't use a private YouTube link, which requires a login to view on YouTube. Okay, so any any video with a link, basically, you can use. Yeah, it, public or unlisted, just okay. not a one that's marked private on YouTube settings. Okay, what about from Google Drive? Google Drive, no. Um, unfortunately, we've tried to work with Google Drive, but they don't mm -hmm. have an API that lets us integrate yet. Okay, we'd love to, but not yet, unfortunately. Okay. Um, you mentioned about sharing. You mentioned about uh, Vimeo. And you also mentioned about up uploading rosters. Um, yeah. Can you pull videos from screencast.com? No, unfortunately. We, we don't have that set up. Is it available for post-secondary faculty? Uh, so for um, like college, college professors? Yeah. And mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. We, we have a lot of higher ed professors using it, actually. Um, it, it, it's a pretty flexible platform, so if you can envision it, you can use it with Educanon. Mm -hmm. Great. With district filtering an issue for so many, how many student, how will students access videos? No, that's a really good question. It's, it was one of our challenges with building out the platform. And our workaround for that is that we built a partnership with the guys at TeacherTube. Mm -hmm. And TeacherTube is a reservoir of like uh, about 500,000 educational videos. And, and it works really well with district filtering, so it's all of the content educationally focused. So you can either A, use existing content on TeacherTube, or B, upload your own video to teachertube.com and use the URL that way. Mm -hmm. Good. Um, if you have your YouTube URL set in something like Safe Share TV or View Pure, will that kind of video URL work? Uh, unfortunately, it won't, just because mm -hmm. it's it's a different hosting site than ours. Mm -hmm. But that being said, if if you're if you'll notice that the Educanon delivery it functions just like people something you see on some, on Share Safe Share TV. We mm -hmm. we eliminate all of the distractions that you see on YouTube. Right. So. In YouTube, you notice that there are those leading commercials. You don't have that in Educanon. In YouTube, you notice at the end you can click on links to go to an external page or a recommended YouTube. We eliminated that. You can't even click on the YouTube link in the bottom right to take you to YouTube.com. We did a lot of work to make sure that an Educanon lesson, once that YouTube's brought in there, it's educationally focused and safe. How many students are allowed for a subscription? Is there a limit to the number of students? Oh, uh, no, it's, there's no limit. It can be as many as you like. Is there student, are there student age restrictions for logging? Yeah, there are. And, and, that, and that's partially dictated by COPA. So if, if you go to the, our homepage and you navigate to the very bottom, you'll see a little bit of information about our privacy. Um, you might have to navigate slowly. There's a there's a pop up that appears, and so we, we need to get rid of that. But there's an educan.com. I think it's slash privacy. Yeah, slash privacy. Uh, and and you'll see that our age restriction. I believe it's twelve. Uh, I, I don't remember the number off the top of my head. But if, but if you want more information, I, I'd recommend going to. And again, we, we did a lot of work to make sure that this is all COPA requirements. So if you have any questions, I, I'd recommend going to that link. So once once the video is in EduCanon, 
then students that have YouTube blocked can still watch the video? No, actually. So, so we sh we're streaming all the video that you so see it's on from YouTube. Okay. from the original video source. So okay. if you have YouTube restrictions, I'd recommend with going to the Vimeo or TeacherTube. Mm -hmm. Can you use this with, with Watch No Learn videos? Watch No Learn. Um, watch No Learn. Uh, truthfully, I haven't played around with them. So, mm -hmm. so right now, the only three video hosts that we're linking to are YouTube, Vimeo, and TeacherTube. Mm -hmm. That's not being, That's not that we don't have plans to integrate with others. But right now, those are the three video sources that we're connected to. Can you insert content from something like a Google Doc? Yeah. So a lot of our teachers, what they do is they uh, insert say a Google form as a link mm -hmm. to the question. Mm -hmm. And what I've seen as an example of uh, one teacher, she created a video in Educational Lesson on Paul Revere. And the very last question was a Google form that asked the students to write in the last stanza of Henry Wadsworth's poem. So you can do a lot of cool linking with Google Docs and Educan. Mm. Very nice. Uh, yeah. is, is it 508 compliant? Uh, is that COPA? Sorry, I don't. I'm a little ignorant here. Person who typed the question may be able to reply to that. Is that the COPA law? You know, what is 508? That, that would be things like people who can't hear uh, uh, and people who can't see well. Uh, sorry, I was completely off. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's accessibility it, it, issues. Accessibility. No, that's a good question. So. Um, it, uh, th there are a few plugins that work really well uh, with Chrome um, that, that let the, as you hover over them, read aloud the question. And so that does work well with our site. Um, we're enabling subtitles over the summer. Subtitles aren't yet in play just because of some tricky YouTube requirements. But you can use, again, like um, voiceover with the Chrome extensions to have uh, the question text and question answers read to you as a student. Okay, I think those were the questions that I found. Can students use the Gmail username plus email convention? Um, so you, is, is the question, um, can the user Gmail login? Or? I think Sorry, it's I the, the, the uh, non-actual Gmail account that they don't have to use a, an email login. Oh yeah, sure. Sorry, I should have addressed that uh, in initially. You don't need to. Students don't actually need to have an email to log in or sign up. It can. It just needs to be username that's unique to our system. Mm. And one question, probably a lot of people have: How is this free? We're not the smartest people. That's probably why. <laughs> but <laughs> uh, um, a, a lot of our revenue is coming from the premium subscription. Yeah, that's okay. where it comes from. Yeah. And so we, we do have school site licenses if anybody's interested, which we give discounts for the premium features and also mm -hmm. a lot more has customer support, hands on webinar training. If anybody here is interested, don't hesitate to reach out. Get that email again. <laughs> Where did the name come uh, the from? Name Educan. Educan. So, uh, <laughs> it's a good question. And we're finally coming back to the point where we can, where it makes sense. Uh, so um, uh, can, it's meant to like be based off canon as in canon the literature, and that mm -hmm. we're building about about a huge reservoir of data and lessons and information that people can pull from. Yeah, this really is a a great tool. Um, uh, you're asking a tough we're, question, we're Maddie. <laughs> The dachshund <laughs> mascot. Where where's the dachshund from? It's probably the most common question we get, and probably the worst answer ever <laughs> of any question that we ever get. It's really there's really no good answer. It's just a cute animal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's all it is. And it's memorable. It's memorable. Sure. So. Yes, you do remember it. Yep. Okay. I think that unless someone has a question that they haven't typed in yet. Um, I think I've exhausted the, the questions that I had. Um, actually, I'll briefly share 
my extremely limited experience, I, I found, I went to the site just yesterday and wanted to add to one of my favorite YouTube videos that I've shared with all my math classes on the Pythagorean theorem and very quickly added some questions to the, the video. It was, it was less than 10 minutes that I had my questions in. I did edit it after I realized that all my answers were the same letter um, because it kept the order that I inputted answers. So that's probably some tip to, to keep in the back of your mind. You have to scramble your answer choices in advance. Um, but it didn't take very long to make it all. It didn't. Ed Buchanan didn't scramble them. I didn't see a choice to do that. Oh, we're rolling that out shortly, though. The okay. The ability to scramble choices. So it's coming up, so. so Peggy's posted the public link for my first try. All right, so I'll go ahead and wrap up the show. The upcoming show dates are these. Uh, May 10th is Donna Hatcher, Live Binders and Bully Binder and Memes with Live Binders co-developers Tina Schneider and Barbara Talent. May 17th, Aaron Marrer will be the featured teacher. May 24th, there is no show because of the Memorial Day weekend and May 31st is still to be announced. This slide is about the future of education event that's coming up. Let me just jump in here, Laurie. Thank you. Um, Thank you. I am so excited about the um, uh, Minicon that's happening tomorrow, and I want to make sure that you all know about this, and I'll drop the link in in just a second. It is um, to whet your appetite for the upcoming Reform Symposium virtual conference that is in July. But this session tomorrow starts off with an amazing poet from Tunisia, and then there's a keynote speaker who is Steve Wheeler from the UK. UK, doing amazing things with technology, published a bunch of books. Um, I know that you're going to love his presentation. And then we have a, a session that is um, different presenters. We have seven different presenters, each doing a five-minute um, session. So it moves really quickly. You'll get lots of inspiration in a short amount of time. And then we're concluding with a tech smackdown. And we all love those because it's a chance for anyone to hop on and share their favorite tech tool. So I'd like to invite all of you to consider joining us tomorrow. 12 noon Eastern time is when the Tech Slam is going to be. And um, sign up and come and share your favorite tool with us. We'd love to have you. Thank you, Peggy. Steve Hargadon's newest project, the Learning Revolution Project, he's gathered together all of his uh, pro uh, professional development resources in one place, including the Host Your Own webinar. That's back at the Learning Revolution Project. Remember, you can nominate a featured teacher for an upcoming show at this form, tinyurl.com slash CR2O Live Featured Teacher Nominate without the E at the end. And you can nominate yourself as well for an upcoming Featured Teacher spot. When you exit the show, your browser should open a link for the survey and the um, form will be posted in the chat as well. So you can get the survey either directly from chat. It's in the live binder. Uh, I think it's also someplace on the 2.0 website. 
uh, somewhere. Um, just in case your browser doesn't open up the survey. Uh, at the very bottom of the survey, you'll see fields for requesting a professional de development certificate. This means that the email you put in for the location you want the, cer the certificate sent to ought to be uh, a personal email rather than a school email. School email accounts tend to block the certificate for coming back to you. If you watch a recording or listen to another archive, you can also request a professional development certificate from that too. Uh, it's in the live binder as well for the show. The video and audio collections are both in iTunes U, so you can watch a video of a recording or listen to an audio. You can also get a, an RSS feed of the show archives as well from the Classroom 2.0 Live page. So special thanks again today to our special guest, Shwarup Raju to Steve Hargadon, the founder of Classroom 2.0, Teacher 2.0, Future of Education, and the Learning Revolution, to Weebly.com for providing our website, and to everyone who participated today in, in the show, as well as thank you to Blackboard Collaborate for providing the platform that we, learned, that we can use for the shows. <laughs>